You just spoke about bidding wars and the strategy and being focused and that is very important. So how would you uh, recommend for agents to handle themselves and educate themselves going forward from their daily life uh, and apply it to everything, not just to bidding wars, but also to grow and uh, maybe be adventurous and uh, create new marketing directions or, or explore new markets. So let me talk about that in two ways. First of all, I'm a big believer in what I call the, 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 the art and the craft of, of real estate, the business and the craft of real estate. And I believe that a good agent is always going to be learning and developing their craft and their skill set. So something that I've, I've done my entire career in real estate is, is try to always improve myself, improve my skill set so it's better. But let's talk about marketing for a bit. You know, part of an agent's brand is how they market property. And you know, let's say you have a bidding war. When you, let's step back a second. When you go meet an, with an owner, you're gonna tell the owner you're gonna do five things or 10 things to market their property. But you may get start getting offers on that property before you complete all those 10 things. In my opinion, it's important to go through and deliver to the seller what you're gonna deliver for a few, for several reasons. Number one, it's part of your brand. You're telling your owner you're gonna do these things, make sure you complete them because it's, it's the right thing to do. You'll need this, some of this, 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 these pieces for future, for future projects. But number two is you don't know that just because you get into a multiple bid situation that, that one of those offers will stick. Deals do die and you wanna be fully prepared to go move forward in case one of those deals dies. But, and lastly, it's also about just going through your word to your seller. Just because you got a, an offer quickly, that's great that you did that, but you still wanna to complete to, the, to to your seller the things you told them to do because that's part of your brand about delivering what you say you're going to deliver. I'm so happy you said that because uh, we are right now experiencing as a marketing company we're experiencing with agents oh that house is going to be sold uh, before the lunch time there is no reason for me to go through my marketing strategy photography I will do that but that is just as far as I get and in my opinion a you promised your seller. That's why you got that listing. You got the listing right. because you had that fabulous strategy. And uh, and the, the deal can fall apart, that is also true. But most importantly, it's consistency. That is your reputation. It's your reputation. I agree with what you said, Lucy. It's your reputation and it's your brand. And part of your brand is to deliver what you say you're going to deliver and that's what you owe it to your clients and you know the client's going to sit there remember you said you're going to do all these five or seven things and if you don't do those five or seven things believe me they will say something and listen if things go great for, for the property and things go well that's great but it's like insurance if it doesn't go great you still need to have a backup in order to move forward and the best time to do that is when the property is new when it's fresh when you're listing it so you put it out there I like how you compare it to the insurance. Yes, thank God you don't have to use it, but if you do, here you are, you are totally re ready and prepared. And I think being prepared as an agent, whether it's being prepared for a bidding war, which is knowing how bidding wars flow, so you can anticipate certain things and manage your seller's expectations, as well as your buyer's expectations, is important as well. And to give you an example of this, in terms of bidding wars, you know, if you get you, in a bidding war comes about, you may get five bids on the property. What happens if after you've accepted one of the offers, the second bidder comes in higher? Or what, do, you, do you go back to the, the first offer? Do you just go with the second offer? Part of this is having a conversation with your owner about the possibilities. This is a possibility that we do see happen. And to have the discussion with the owner up front, what will you do if this happens, helps you keep control of that situation in a better fashion. And to be fair to all the parties involved.